Okay, so hi everybody, good afternoon. I'm here for making a demonstration of the work that we are doing about uh, the, our open source tools for trying to, to learn or to teach to non-technical people or, or even kids to design digital circuits using open source FPGAs. By the way, this is my little girl, Alicia, she's years old and um, she's my beta tester, so <laughs> I, I use her for, for my, my testing. Um, my nickname is Obi-Juan, I'm not a Jedi yet, but I'm trying, I promise. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at Red Juan Carlos University in Madrid, Spain. I'm also a researcher on robotics. I'm, uh, my passions are the open source, mm, 3D printers, FPGAs, and all this kind of, of stuff. So, before starting, I would like to thank you to Clifford Wall for the wonderful Iston project, and also to Matthias Lesser. They are the, create, the, the creators of this project, and it's the first time in history that we have fully open source tools for synthesizing hardware and this is something that is going to change everything i'm sure it's like the first open source compiler we have uh, we have in in the history of the gcc but this is the same but in the in the hardware world and now researchers all around the world and, and the community can can create new applications and we can start doing different things than the manufacturers uh, have designed the, the tools so our motivation is trying to answer to this question. Is it possible for kids or non-technical people to design digital circuits? I really don't know, but we are doing this work for, for trying to know. And also, can we create libre tools or open source tools for allowing them to learn digital electronics? We don't know. Let's, let's try to see where, where we can go. So the tools that we have designed and in this demo, I'm, I'm using the Isum Alhambra. This is a kind of Arduino board. So we have removed the Arduino. It is an, it's an open hardware. So we have replaced the Arduino by an FPGA. And let's say, okay, instead of programming your robots or, or your stuff, just create digital circuits for learning. The other two. Uh, this, this tool has been made in KitKat. It's open source and everything is available in the GitHub repository. So you can you can check there all the inform all the details, the uh, design files, uh, manufacturing files, whatever. And the other tool is Ice Studio that um, Jesus has already presented to you. This is the tool we are going to use to represent the schematics and then synthesizing the hardware. And we need something to work. And I usually use a kind of, of cork panel with push pins. Push pins is a technology very well known worldwide, so uh, anyone knows how to use it. And also creating different peripherals and, and, and parts that have been printed with the 3D printer. By the way, everything that you see here is uh, on the repository and everything has a, a, a free license, an open source license, so you can print yourself. So the, the peripherals that we have designed are very simple, LIDs, switches, buttons, but using 3D printer. And so here, here are some, some, some peripherals that, that, that you can pass all around just to, to have in, in your hands and to touch it. They have been designed with three cards. I know I don't know if Jory is here, but he will be in, in the late afternoon. And let's start the demonstration. So here, what we have, I have a, a webcam here. Uh, I think you can you can see well. I have my panel. This is the FPGA, this black chip. Here I have a servo. I have uh, LID switches, uh, buttons, buzzers. IR sensor. So now I know that you guys are engineers, many of you, and you know a lot of electronics, but let's pretend you know nothing. Let's do the first circuit for turning on an LID. What I have here in the background is ICE Studio. 
is this white background. This in, in, in that background, we are inside the FPGA. So the first thing we are going to do is just to place an output pin. We are inside the FPGA, we're going to go outside. So let's call it LID. So this is an, an FPGA pin. And for turning on a LED, we need to put a one. This is digital electronics, zero to one. But I imagine the, the bits like kind of small creatures, uh, small things with, with legs that are running around the wires. And this is because in hardware we work in, in a space. So that's why I, I like to, to imagine things moving. So we place the wire and we select which pin of the FP FPGA we want to go outside. In this case, let's choose, uh, for example, LID0 is one of these um, LID that is on the, that it's on the, on the board. And now let's upload the circuit. And in very few seconds, you can see here that the LED is turned on. Only three seconds from, from here to here is very fast. It's really fast. It's amazing. I've never seen nothing before. I've been many years working with silence, uh, and, uh, and this is <laughs> this is wonderful. And but what what really happens here? This is not an emulation. This is a real circuit that has been mapped inside FPGA. So there is something physical inside here. This is the circuit that we have created. This is not a simulation, not a emulation. It's real hardware that you have synthesized using only your finger. Very, very easy. So I think that's, that's the way for trying to, for attracting more people to the hardware world. And let's try to, to turn on two LEDs. So easy, we copy and paste the circuit. Now, these are two circuits in parallel. This is another characteristic of uh, hardware. The hardware works in parallel. We can do uh, many things in parallel. Let's choose, for example, now these two ex external LEDs. I've connected this to D13 and D12 output. So I choose it here, D13, D12, and now let's upload. The hardware synthesizing is uploading, and in very few seconds, this, the board is turned off. And here you see the, the LEDs. Yeah, so fast. It's, it's, it's amazing. Next example, let's blink uh, a LED. This is the second hello world. If you think about it in, in software, this is an algorithm. Uh, wh what, have, what do you have to do for, for making a LED blinking? First, you turn on then delay, then turn off, delay, and repeat. This is a loop. Okay, this is the, the software thinking. But in hardware, things are, are moving physically. So what we need to do is pumping the, the bits or pushing the bits. So for example, we can use a heart. So we place here a heart. And now I will, I will Press the shortcut, control U for going faster. And now it's, it's been synthesized the hardware, and now the LED is blinking. And you can hear the, the heartbeat. One zero, one zero, one zero. Beats are coming from, from the heart to, to, to the LED. What should I do if I, may, I, I want to blink it faster? So stupid, just use a, a, a faster heart. For example, oh. Here I have one, four hertz. We put it here. Synthesizing. And now we have two blinking LEDs, one faster and one slower. But the two LEDs are blinking at, uh, in parallel. Try to make this in Arduino. Of course you can do it. It's, it's so easy for programmers, but not for beginners. Uh, when kids are, are programming Arduino or, or in general programming, it's, it's very difficult for making parallel things. You need to, to learn a lot about computer science for, for multiplexing the CPU, interruption, and this kind of advanced stuff. But not in hardware. In hardware, parallelism is for free. <laughs> you, you, you have it, so let's use it. If we want to, to, to blink the two LEDs with the same frequency, so easy, just drag one, one heart into the other and just 
uploading and synthesizing, and we have the two blinking LEDs at the same time. Let's change some, some bits. For example, let's add here uh, a logic gate, a node gate, for example, here, and wait. we put it here, and now what is happening is that one LID is on, the other is off. So we, we, we have here a kind of light siren. So easy. OK, let's move to the next example. Now we would like to, to work, for example, with, with servos. Let's move this servo. For moving this servo, I will place here what I call the component a servo bit. This is the, the simplest controller for, for moving a servo, only in two positions. If you put in the input a one, it will move to one position and a zero to another position. Let's connect this to an output here. And the output, the servo is connected to this zero. And let's add an input. And here. And we connect the input to the servo. This is a switch and the switch is connected to the 11 and we synthesize of course the light siren is, is already here parallelism is for free and now if I just change the switch the, the servo is moving to one side and the other and of course in parallel the, the light siren is also moving are two independent circuits running at, at the same time in the same FPGA now, in, instead, of, in, instead of doing uh, the circuit by myself, I will take some examples just for making more, more dynamic the demonstration. What happens when, when, you, when you put the servo and you show it to a kid, he me immediately tells you what happens if you connect a pump, uh, sorry, a pump, a heart to the, to the servo. So let's try. Let's put it here to see what happens. And is what is going to happen is what, what you expect to happen. That is going to start moving from one side to the other. Now, you, 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 can, you can see how, how the heart is, is moving. You want, you want it to, to move slower. You put a slower heart or a divider. In electrical engineers will use a T flip-flop for dividing by two the frequency. But here we can use, I, I call it a, a turtle. So we put here, and we put it here, the turtle. So of course the kids know that the bits are going to run um, slower. Well, you see? And if you can add as, as much as, uh, as, much as, as many you want the uh, turtles. Next example. Let's move to, to the sound. For example, a doorbell. Yeah, it's so easy. We have here a buzzer, and this is a component for generating a square signal with a tone. And this is a push button. So when it receives one, it star, uh, it sounds, and when it doesn't receive the, the beat, uh, when, when it receives a zero, it stops. Yeah, a doorbell, a time. Yeah, cool. And now, can we connect a uh, heart to, to here? Of course. So let's, let's put here, for example, this one. <laughs> of course, you see? And of also, the servo here is, is, is moving, the, la the light signal and, and the acoustic signal. Everything is moving at the same time. Okay, I will turn it off just for safety. We can try to put it you want or 10 hertz. Let's try. Yeah, yeah just, I I'm just playing. <laughs> okay. So, 
let's move to, to, to the next example. Here I'm using a buzzer just, just for playing one tone, but you can play two tones and create a real siren, a kind of real siren. Here the sequel is a little bit more, more complex. You have here the, the two, uh, let's synthesize it. The high and low tones and a multiplexer and, and the heart is selecting which of the tone can you hear on the on the on the buzzer and here I have a push button and an AND gate just for letting the sound the siren sound. So when I press the signals okay, five minutes, yeah. You see? Okay. And now the final Final example, let's use I, IR sensors. Here I've connect, connected the IR sensor to the buzzer directly. And of course the rest of, of the circuits are, are here. So when I when I put my hand here, it detects my hand and it emits a, a sound. When I show it to my little daughter, she told me, hey, I like it a lot, I want to play to the supermarket. It's a kind of, of cash, in cash register machine. So she went to do some, some products and said, okay, one, two, yeah, it's 10, 10 50 please. <laughs> so uh, I like it that, that example and I created a better one that is here the supermarket but uh, still it's, it's very it's quite simple that n now the, the the sound is is always the same direction and also when you when you pass some of when when you scan some object the servo moves why because we can because it's cool because <laughs> And then here you have a binary counter that is telling you how many objects. The problem is that it's been in binary, but okay. It's okay. And here you can reset it. And the final example that I want you to try is this one. It's a supermarket, but I also added uh, the spinner. Why? I don't know. It's so, so cool. <laughs> And here, what you have is that if you move the spinner, you can hear it's, it's counting the, the pulses and also it's working as, as a supermarket in parallel. And oh, thank you. And now I will give it to you. We put here a power bank. And yeah, the, the circuit is inside. So, so you can pass all around and, and test it. I'm playing a little bit. And just, just to finish, I am a robotic guy. So this is a, a modular robot. This is the kind of robot I, I like. It moves like a caterpillar. It only has two servos. Here I have an FPGA and it's moving like this. I will put it on the camera. So, eyes are very important. It's the most important part. And as the hardware works in parallel, I've also added, in addition with the locomotion algorithm implemented in hardware, I've added another circuit for playing some music. Yes. yes. In parallel. So, let me connect it here. <laughs> so, this is all for my part. Thank you very much. And may the Open FPGAs be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Now you can play. Sorry, I, I didn't hear you because of, of the Imperial March, but...
for localization, what do you mean the robot or? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, I'm so sorry, I didn't understand you. Here, you, you can change the language, and it's, uh, now it's in Spanish and, and Galician, Basque, French, Catalan, this, all the language in Spain. Yeah, but this is, is possible. That's one good thing about the, the, the free software that you, you can adapt and you put your own language. Yeah. Yeah, you mean a kind of animation uh, or? Oh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's already parameterized. Uh, but, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, Jesus already told, told about it, you can add a parameter. But for kids and for simple demos, it's better just to have a customized heart and just replace one by another. But of course, you can do it. And of course, you, you can also do it in Verilog. You can open the, the, the heart and, and, and do it in Verilog. Mm, I don't know, but I, uh, so sorry, the question is about the safety of this kind of, of uh, stuff. I, I've only tested with my daughters and the daughters and, and kids of my, my friends. So, but FPGA, FPGAs can be used by anyone. Then, then the peripheral you use is up to you. <laughs> You mean the Alhambra? Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's telling me about this board, the Alhambra board. It's, it's not commercial. We we've made some uh, crowdfunding campaigns just just for for making this kind of Arduino with FPGAs, and it's free software, uh, free hardware. So if anyone wants to. Yeah, initially we made uh, a batch of 10, 10 um, 100 boards, but people start uh, buying more, uh, they wanted more, and now we have manufactured fi 500 or something like that, a kind of on demand. And we are continue doing, but, yeah. Mm. It's a research project. Yes, yes. We don't have long term now, but maybe other people can use it and, and do that plan. So I, I'm a kind of scientist, so I'm not really interested in that that part of the commercial part. But everything we have a free license, so everything can be can be can be used and reused, and you can make money with this if you want. Okay, let's thank Juan again. Thank you.